Chess games come excellent. You can say uh, like uh, Capablanca versus uh, Alakine. So I went to the front page for those of you not familiar with um, chess games com. This is the best way to do it. Capablanca versus Alakine. Aliakin, as long as you're short, I think one said pronunciation. So we see the score in the classical games. Capablanca beat Alakine only 10 to 7 with 33 draws. So I'm curious about this and um, the structure of this, uh, guys. As far as the structure of this is concerned, whoops, I'll just try and get the chat thing over here. Um, oh, can I just get that window on the left? What I want to say about this is basically. Um, the early encounters from 1913 to 1927 are not are totally disastrous for Alkine, the early encounters. And that may have led to complete complacency on, on Capablanca's part, completely understandable, I think, in my view. Uh, if you look at these early encounters, so he lost in 1913. Okay, maybe he was developing as a player as well. He lost again in 1913 he had a draw in 1914 okay only part then he then Capablanca beat him again and again and again so we have five losses 1913 to 14 a draw in 1922 a few more draws 1924 1927 then we have their, their world championship match so about that time if you had beaten someone 5-0 basically with a few draws you would be feeling quite confident of winning the match against them surely you'd be really confident and I think there's something psychological going on this this is like a conspiracy theory that um, Lekin he really wanted a world title shot and in those days before proper organization like yearly or whatever uh, it was really once you got the crown you could set your conditions um, Okay. So, so, <laughs> so sorry. So, someone. Um, okay. So, uh, so what? Once you got the crown, you could set your conditions. Yeah, for for the rematch. So you set your conditions for the rematch. So, but you want to get a challenge match. So what do you do? So the champion must choose his opponent also, yeah. But uh, they, you know, they set huge wages, and it was historically, it seemed, you know, very, very difficult uh, to challenge uh, the world champion. In fact, some very, very strong players like Rubenstein, you know, he was a very, very powerful player, winning many tournaments, but he didn't, he couldn't uh, afford, you know, the challenge of of the the world, you know, champion at the time. So it was harsh times, you know, like to challenge Lasker before that. So uh, once, you know, Lasker had, had given the crown uh, to Capablanca, uh, you, maybe, you know, this is part of an arch strategy that Al Alakine was in no mood. He didn't really want to uh, win the battle but lose the war here. Could you say that he was content not to win a single game? I'm going to say this quite controversially up to 1927. You want to match with someone, you want to give them the idea they're going to crush you. Would that be fair to say? Or is that a misinterpretation of the historical match record? Uh, he, maybe he didn't try. He, he had a few draws here. There wasn't any clue he would beat uh, Capablanca in that match. Was there? We'll, we'll find out. I mean, it, it, it sure does make a recipe for complacency. But we'll look at the only game in 1913 first so we'll look at these two in 1913 first then move on to 1914 we'll look at the decisive games I, I guess you guys don't want to look at the draws should we just look at the wins only we'll focus on the wins that that will take enough time as it is just to focus on the wins yeah so we'll go back to 1913 St Petersburg okay So 
the first one I'll zoom into the board and uh, I'll make it board only okay St Petersburg 1913 Is the board okay? Or do you want do you want board adjusted? Board's okay. Okay. So this is Alakine uh, versus Capablanca nineteen thirteen. So Alakine playing white and Yakin playing white. Yeah, there was a ten year period. Was it after losing to Laska when Laska was quite an old man that Capablanca didn't lose for 10 years? Was that the point he didn't lose for 10 years? Oh, you want to see coordinates? Okay, coordinates. Um, okay. Do you want board sounds as well? <laughs> Do you want board sounds? Hang on, let's just check the sounds. There's board sound there. Do you like board sounds? Okay. So the first encounter. Uh, <laughs> tough. You're going to have board sounds. You're going to have it. No, I, I think it's too clinical without board sounds. Right? <laughs> it's quite silent anyway. So Alakine against Capablanca, 1913. So Capablanca, actually, let's take the winner's side, board flip. So Roy Lopez, Bishop E7. Where is the board sound now, anyway? Come on. I'll put my volume up. I don't know. There's no board sound, sorry. Let's move on. So Bishop B3 d6 so a closed kind of Roy Lopez so black's gonna try and stretch out on the Queen side with c5 maybe Bishop b7 would you say so Capablanca is not worried he's um he's got a nice position here with black rather he's playing black so Capablanca is the black side all right okay thank you for that clarification okay so Knight f1 <clears throat> is the knight going to, um, you know, g3, f5, Kasparov's favourite square? So he takes on d4 and bishop e6. Maybe Kappa's got a nice position already. Doesn't mind breaking the odd rule, the knight on the rim. You know, he's got b3, he's got the c file. If, if d5, then the bishop can drop back and maybe knight b7 to c5. So rook c8, there's pressure. Knight c4. Nice position for black. So Capablanca's, you know, played the opening, um, funny enough, without any risk of being splattered, you know, like in Sicilian. He just plays very solidly. He's temporarily sacrificing the e-pawn, uh, which if you look at, um, like, grandmasters like Hebden, he's often sacrificing his e-pawn for a lot of pressure. Um, so here, uh, the e-pawn's not in pre. The bishop, wh what to do about the bishop anyway? Uh, is it going to be forced to move in a horrible place? No, rook c1. Okay. b3. Bishop's a bit hemmed in. And also a4 looks as though it's going to drop off. In fact, it does. So e4 might be under fire, but what about the e5 pawn? It's taken. Rook d8. So Capablanca's got a fine position, it seems. We wouldn't mind having the black position here, would we? In this first encounter so um, h6 doesn't even he rules out bishop g5 so knight d7 okay so knight d7 there might be um, a little trick coming up soon well f2 might be vulnerable but okay what to do about the knight he pins against the rook okay on um, he protects the rook So bishop c4, so what's going on here? A bit of manoeuvring. The rooks can come off. Capablanca's heading to an end game, maybe, if the rooks come off. That's refused. Knight d3. Nice little tactic. So if bishop d3, an interference tactic for rook d6. 
So rook d6. So it seems from this position Capablanca has got better control over the centre for the moment. Striking through the centre. His pieces strike through the centre quite well here if you look at this. Uh, the rook on a1 and also this pawn on b3. I think black's got a big advantage intuitively. This pawn can't be taken. Bishop f2 check. Oh, if, even if the queen wasn't protecting it. So the queen is protecting it. Queen c2. The big surprise now of the game. Queen c2. So just emphasising this really dangerous pawn. b2 under fire. Bishop f2 immediate threat because if queen takes f2, queen takes c1. This is the early, early encounter. Maybe Eliakim wasn't wasn't that great anyway, in theory. Uh, this is a long time before. Um, unless he had a, like a ten year plan. But this is this is nineteen thirteen. The World Championship match was in nineteen twenty seven. So that's quite a big foresight um for wanting to play passively here. Uh but he, he does seem to have been outplayed. So he's just lost two pawns. And his king's in trouble as well now. This b2 b2 pawn is a menace. So bishop b6, threat now of b1 queening. Again, you know, just 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 a piece up. It's it's all over. Quick deflection just to finish off. So that was their first encounter, apparently. Um that was a disaster for White. Uh, should we have a look at overview and summary? Would you like overview and summary of this game? Are, are you all shocked or are you all intimately aware of this game? Were you all intimately aware of this? This is the earlier encounter. So Capablanca shows solid play, dangerous use of an advanced pawn, um, just basically better quality pieces and fine tactical skill. See if you look at the Queen C2 move, no missed opportunity, a nice little deflection tactic coming up with Knight D interruption tactic with Knight D3, interruption interrupting protection of D6. And a nice little pawn promotion tactic with this. So if takes takes there's nothing that can be done about rook D1 in time. You all got that, didn't you? You know, if the king moves rook d1, if the queen moves rook d1, so that was that was nice. Queen c2, it's a killing move. You you all see this as a killing move, don't you? So it forced the concession. So this is where he went two pawns up. He's attacking the queen, and he switches the rook rather elegantly as well. That that was very nice to head for g2. So his king's quite safe. Uh, there's no major issue um, and the b2 pawn provides the, if he didn't need it you know massive distraction for his king okay next game next game so that was that was their first encounter um, let's go back or we'll just press f10 until we get does f10 work nope of course not second game So 14, 12, 19, 13. In December, this game, Capablanca White. Capablanca White. Flip the board. Okay. So D4. I think this is where... I suspect this is the game where Capablanca got um, Knight and Bishop versus Rook, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so knight d2. This this was the old way of just handling the dreaded Slav defence. You just simply protect the c4 pawn with knight d2. And maybe, you know, you're going to play b, b3 and bishop b2 later. You're going to exert influence on e5 later. It's an okay way of playing it. Maybe. Also, there's pressure on h7 anyway. Um, so knight takes c4. d takes c. How do we describe this move? D takes C. I don't think it's particularly appropriate here because it's justified knight D2. The knight's going to be really strengthening with an iron grip, this E5 square. I'm not sure D takes C was appropriate, personally. 
Um, but I suppose black is is cramped here. But it's even worse now. This really is a terrible bishop at the moment. How is black going to solve this main um, strategic issue? So a big knight on e5 doesn't mind the isolated queen's pawn. It's just emphasized pressure on the c file c7 h7. It's 1913. This is 14 years before the World Championship match. But that's a bit of a long-term plan, isn't it? But um, the D pawn is in pre here. So is this a crafty little tactic? G6. So what was wrong with Queen takes D4? Well, actually, um, H7 is attacked three times. Uh, so maybe just... Mind you, the knight would be in pre. So what do you guys reckon the refutation of this is? I assume bishop takes h7, actually. So then if king h8, then, then knight f7 is mating, actually. So without turning on an engine, I know, I know you're all impressed with my amazing tactical abilities here. But this looks to be a forced mate here. That looks to be a mate, yeah? So in other words, it's not a good idea to take the d-pawn here. <laughs> so the isolated pawn isn't all it's cracked up to be sometimes. Okay. That's my Diet Coke. I'm trying to stay awake now. Now I'm trying to get more alert. So Black's got a few issues in this position already with h7. So do you think Alakine's Anakin's played this too pa passively. Isn't, sorry, Blitzkrieg Bob writes, isn't knight takes bishop a counter for the mate? No, 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 I'll show you. Bishop takes h7. Knight takes, there's queen takes. Queen takes his mate still. Okay, so g6, further weaknesses around the king. So he just goes back, he's just created the weaknesses, he can pop his bishop into the weaknesses now. Bishop g5, nasty pressure is building up. Okay, doesn't mind about knight b4. That's not even used anyway. So queen d2 now anyway, so knight b4 is ineffectual. Bishop h6 now threatening to win the exchange. Bishop e4 trying to lift the blockade maybe, just to take, maybe share the e-file rather cruelly. That was supposed to be black's trump card, this isolated queen's pawn. If there's a pawn here, it's not as bad. It's shielded by, by black's pawn. If there's a pawn on d5, this pawn isn't as weak. So bishop takes d5 now. Unfortunately, it looks as though queen d5 might be ruled out because of rook c5 here. So e takes d was played. We assume that. Rook c5 just wins a piece, doesn't it? So e takes d5. Actually, I think I, I might have annotated this game on YouTube, actually. Queen a5, nifty move. That c7 is being used for infiltration. So white's got a big advantage. It looks as though Campablanca played this, you know, fantastically well. H6 to stop knight g5. So he just picks up a pawn and now he puts more pressure on black's king side with this knight h4. So he's threatening knight takes g6. And, you know, g5 is, is not particularly good because of the f5 square. So black's really being crushed again in this game. Uh, you know, look at that 7 franc pressure on f7. There, there, I don't think there's any defence when I've analysed this before. I think on, on YouTube this game. So knight takes g6. And it's just feeble. Uh, Black could have resigned here quite easily. He loses the exchange as well. Two pawns and the exchange down. Check. And the king's going to get, you know, prettily mated with knight f4. End of game. So Alakine was severely beaten up would you say, in this second decisive 
win. Uh, but it didn't seem as though, if we do an overview of something, it didn't look as though his opening was particularly offering, um, you know, opportunities uh, for, for significant counterplay. Um, let's be brutal about it. You know, D takes C4. White's got a, a powerful grip on the position. And although theoretically White's got the isolated Queen's pawn, um, there's so many trump cards White's got in exchange for that isolated Queen's pawn. It doesn't really matter. It seems Knight G5 is a hugely effective move in this game. Uh, just, just for H7 pressure, just to, to weaken Black's King even more. Um, I mean, this King G7, okay. He wants to stop Bishop H6. Now, okay, in this position, okay, let's let's have a look at this Knight B4. Could that have not been played Knight B4? Just just one question here. What would be the refutation of Knight B4 here? Does anyone know? Should I stick on an engine just in case? I guess it might be queen d2 actually because knight takes d3 you can insert bishop h6 check and then bishop takes f8 I guess that's the reason queen d2 anyway yeah shall I just check that we'll add a kibitzer yeah queen d2 is given as the move big advantage to white and then bishop h6 okay so knight takes d3 you insert the check Okay, here not bishop takes f8, just queen takes d3 apparently. Now if the rook moves, now knight g5 here is apparently crushing. Sorry, I'll just move this a bit further. Apparently knight g5 is crushing in this position. It, the problem is f7. So in, th in this position, um, not not bishop takes f8, but black black would be better, I think, or or okay with knight takes c1. No, the, the the crushing move is just to take on d3 and then knight g5. Everyone convinced by that? So knight b4 is out of the question because of queen d2. Everyone convinced? Yeah. All right. Let's close that. Um. Is the board still okay at this? If I put a bit of padding on left and right, is the board still okay to look at? So we can switch to engine mode without any problem. Board still okay here? Yeah? Okay, sorry. Um, I eyed, you said knight takes a2. No, no, you're gonna lose the exchange. Just bishop h6 check is, is winning the exchange. So so it was a dire game, would you would you not say? It was quite passive, but it was actually very well played from Capablanca's point of view. It seems he played a nice game. But, you know, even bishop b5, you know, what does it really do, bishop b5? It's like leaving a piece uh, to be attacked later. Uh, you know, pieces like loose pieces, they just get attacked later with tempo. So that looks a bit odd. I mean, queen a5 later, get, getting the c file, the, the rook on the 7th, it's downhill after that. Okay, so there are two theories here, right? Eliakim was, was not that great yet. That's theory one. Theory two, he just wants to lose his first five games. <laughs> against Campoblanca in in the year, years leading up to the challenge it probably probably a mixture of both maybe later he had thought about it I, I'm not really convinced maybe, maybe he wasn't that great at the moment so let's go to game three should we go to game three or this should we just quickly whiz again through this so this was a disaster on the seventh rank because of this pin it's and, and black was just destroyed now yeah 
there was a threat of knight f5 mating because that knight's covering that so that hence the exchange sack but he could have resigned now okay so we'll go to the third encounter so 1914 Campablanca white again by the way is the board okay still with this padding here and here boards okay yeah All right I assume it is so <clears throat> d4 d5 c4 so we have a slav the old slav so what's what's going to be played now again this poxy knight d2 yes is there going to be a slight innovation from black no there's still d takes c4 in fact are we looking at the same game here is there a difference this is the same game pardon me <laughs> sorry sorry about that what game are we looking at um so there was that one I think that's a duplicate game. 35 moves. Let's move on to that one. Oh dear. Oh, here we've got a different game. French defense. Okay. So win and were variation. But classical variation with knight f6. Forget bishop b4. It was Botvinnik later that popularized bishop b4. So I think that was the old classical variation. It became came before the winnower. Is that correct? Knight f6 was the old. That's why it's called old classical variation. Just inviting the center to close. But bishop g5. Very popular nowadays as well. Bishop g5. h6 not as popular. Bishop b4 is a popular move. So Eliakim played h6. Uh, yeah, maybe another day. I just, I just really need to know this myself. Uh, DH Reed, I, I need to know the answer to this. Capablanca versus Anakine. Okay. So H6 is a bit of a passive move. Would you all agree? It's, the, it's an old way of playing it. Whites actually seem to have a good position after ED. You know what what is this a gambit of some sort ed check whites are clear pawn up it's some sort of weird gambit blacks are pawn down here what compensation he's got pressure on d4 whites are pawn up though where's the compensation So he plays c3, reinforcing the centre, kicking the bishop at the same time. Encouraging the exchange of queens. Okay, so c5. Does black have compensation? What do, what do you guys think? Has black got a good play for the pawn here? Mark on Jan Sob says, yup. Okay, so knight takes c5. Takes. Queen takes. Right. Knight d4. How does white... He's got that very nice knight on d4 though now. Which is difficult to dislodge. So he's attacking f7. It was defended. Knight c6. Family fork. Ouch. Was that a bit of a tactical mistake? This last move, Queen E7. <laughs> Check. Maybe not. Here, the Rooks attacked and F7 attacked. So what's happening here? Is it Rook D7? Okay, so knight d4. 
some simplification there. Queen g3. So with this queen g3, what is he doing? Let's see. The queen moves over there. Check. Queen e8. Whoa! Knight e6. So there's a deadly threat of knight f8. And if takes, I guess rook f8 is, is really dangerous for rook h8. Tax to rook. Check. Check. And now queen c5 hitting two pieces. This is getting, this is quite tactical, this game. Protects the rook. And if queen takes b5, queen takes f2. Check. And now he takes. He doesn't mind this because he's got a critical tempo gain now after takes. Check. And you can imagine knight f8 to g6 takes here. Why didn't the rook take the knight? Sorry, this is tactically complex. Pardon me. So which position? Why didn't the rook take the knight? In this position, why didn't the rook take to knight? So rook takes here. I think just queen takes bishop. Yeah. And white's a solid pawn up, wouldn't you say? He's also got queen f5 check coming up. And he's got a 3 to, to 1 pawn majority on the queen side. But let's let's work through that sequence again. Sorry, it, w it was a bit quick. Let's go back here to this queen g3 move. So we can assume queen g3 was actually mainly about getting this, this queen b8 check. Okay. So we'll do an action replay. Okay. Queen b1. Not sure what the purpose of it is. The pawn's protecting um, the rook. It's protecting the bishop though. So check. And now there was this idea queen e8 so the rook moved to try and win the b2 pawn but now Capablanca unleashed this amazing tactical idea of knight e6 do you, do you want us to go it should we go into this if if takes had occurred I think it's a disaster I believe it's just rook f8 Rook f8 is, is crushing, apparently, yeah, because the rook h8 is a, is a major threat. This can't be allowed. Okay? Rook f7 is just desperate. So th this is a dangerous mating threat because the queen's cutting off the king. It's, it's over. So that knight e6 is a neat tactical idea. Whoops. Oh, dear. See, Houdini kills my machines. I, I shouldn't have turned it on. Um, oh, dear. I think I've just crashed my chess base. Oh, no. We're back. So, knight e6. So we have some tactical vulnerabilities. He attacks the rook. Check, check. Then he attacks both of those pieces. Alakine counterattacks against the rook. But now there's this clever little thing that occurs. Check. Then he takes. So we get this position with rook e2. Check check queen e5 threatening now mate in two ways takes check and this this looks like a winning a uh, rook and pawn ending because of these three to one check takes three to zero i think that's convincing enough 
Aliakin resigned here. Let's let's do an overview and summary of that game. So an old way of playing the French defence with a very passive h6, seemingly a very weird gambit, just losing a pawn. I'm I'm not sure it's that brilliant, but I suppose Capablanca did play really well, did he? Did he play really well? He neutralised all the pressure on d4. And then it got a bit weird after after this e5. Um, so, I mean, this queen e7 is aiming for this rookie one check. So black went downhill now after knight e6. I suppose if white didn't have knight e6, then then um, this would be bad to move the pawn. I don't know what white still looks okay. So we get this tactical sequence ending up in this one rook and pawn ending. Three pawns up. Okay, shall we move on to another game? We'll close that now. Yeah. So that was um, that was nineteen fourteen. So we'll go to this one. 35 moves. Capablanca was black. So what did he do? Against e4, he played e5 again. Classical stuff. d6. Looks a bit passive, this system, d6. I think Lasker played it a lot. Um, so it's solid. A bit cramped, would you say, for black? So knight f5 from Anakine. He's got double pawns, but he's got this, you know, good use of d5 maybe. So knight d5, c3 blunting the bishop. So what has Capablanca got here? Does he have a good position out of the opening? Takes on f6, okay. He's got double pawns, but he's got potential, you know, dynamism on the b file now. Maybe this bishop, this knight can come in to c4 at some point. Okay, so f5 is also a problem. In fact, he's just one f5, okay, for the c7 pawn. So is black doing well here? Queen e6. So he's offering the a7 pawn. Didn't Nasca play a game like this where he offered the a7 pawn to get an attack? You know, maybe there's some attacking scheme here, like knight here to here to use the pin. So knight d5, knight f4 fret, yeah? King move, that seems to be a panicky king move. It's protecting the rook on e2, isn't it, with the king against knight f4. He plays it anyway. Of course he can play it anyway. There's too much pressure on e2 treble battery knight takes g2 what's happened here check hack attack time oh no there's rook takes e3 isn't there bang this is the sort of game i'll play yeah <laughs> on chess cube <laughs> look at this this queen it's a spectator queen now it won that pawn on a7 let that be a lesson to you guys <laughs> you know this this was a real crush wasn't it so again Alakine, it doesn't really come out in these early games as offering much resistance would you say in these early decisive games what would be the evidence so far 
And that was it. And that's almost the same pattern of Alaska victory, where Alaska had sacrificed his A A two, his A seven pawn as a sort of distraction for the queen. And then you know Alaska got you know a major attack after, from the same sort of opening as well. So seemingly pa passive, cramped position. But there's an opportunity once he gets this knight d seven. He can play knight bishop f six. He's challenging that d five. So yeah, Mustang fan writes, materialism punish. Yeah, uh, Picanto writes, you're right, Mustang fan. Okay, some agreement there. So materialism punished. Uh, so it started with this inviting this this. Oh, the queen is is attacking the rook, but it's protected by the knight at the moment. So this invasion uh, to attack these pawns is not as significant. Once the queen's taken that a7 pawn, there's big trouble now after knight d5. Or we assume there's big trouble. Should we engine check this position to see if there was an amazing technical defense? Should we do that just for a laugh? Should we just check this position? I mean, what about, you know, let's, let's check it, yeah? About equal, g3. I was just looking at g3 just now. I was thinking, g3, hold on. You want to stop knight f4? Isn't g3 the way to do it? Apparently, f5 is a good move here. Just to just to play f4. So, say queen b7, f4. Queen a6, Mustang fan writes. Okay, after f5, you want to, you want to say queen a6. Is that your proposal here? Queen a6. F4 is crushing according to Houdini here. Uh, if you take then there's going to be knight takes f Oh no, it's check. Check it is murder. Am I going to be able to turn this off after? King h1 check. And then oh, swing a rook in. So th this will do the job. Just swing this rook in for the kill. Okay, so we're all convinced that was a crushing attack, yeah? Even if g3 was played. So, was that a masterly stroke to sacrifice the a7 pawn by Capablanca? Who we'd, we'd thought was a, a positional player, but had double pawns, had great dynamism here, and played like Lasker basically, didn't he? Queen a6 before g3. Do you mean queen a6 in this position? Queen a6 in this position. So king f1 was played here. You, you, you mean queen a6 here? I think knight f... Oh, I see. Knight f4 still works, you know, because it's a triple battery. Knight f4 is still on the cards. I just want to make sure of that. Oh, knight f4 apparently is equal. Rook d2. Apparently the stronger move here, not knight f4, rook d2, apparently it's still f5 as the stronger move. So say c4, knight b4, attacking the queen. Queen takes c4. Okay, it's a different line. That's very interesting. Yeah, I think you might be right. That was one of the best moves, maybe. So in this position... Uh, King f1 was played. So the engine um, likes g3 or queen a4. If we add another one, maybe uh, queen a6 will come up. I'm going to crash my machine doing this. Nope. Nope. Okay, there's many moves in the position. Queen a6 comes up there. Look, queen a6. Wow. It was there for a, for a moment. It's it's dangerous for white because of this f5. Can we get that conclusion from the game? That this a7 pawn is going to be punished 
doesn't have to be with direct piece play. It can be used with the pawns smashing up first. Okay, so that was a nice game from Capablanca. Really crushing, yeah? So how on earth did Alikane uh, beat Capablanca in the World Championship match in 1927? We're back at 1914, though. Still quite a long way before the World Championship match. So they had a draw here in 1914. Should we just should we just whiz through it? Should we whiz through their draw? So Alakine was white. We're just going to whiz through it just just to get the gist of it. Boring, boring. Uh, so they're going to agree a draw soon. <laughs> boring. Okay, that's why we don't look at the draws. Okay, let's not look at the draws. Terrible mistake. Skip the draw. So 1924, they had a draw there, a draw there. In fact, there's an 18 move draw. No, let's not look at it. So another decisive game in 1927. So Anakine playing white against Capablanca, New York tournament of 1927. <clears throat> D4, Knight F6. Whoa, hypermodern. None of this D5. Hypermodern Knight F6 ahead of his time. E6, Nimzo Injun. He's copying Nimzovich. He's taking note of those hypermodernists, those crazy ones. Ratty, Nimzovich, Breyer. The crazy idealists from Europe. Yeah? So B6, control of E4 square. Hypermodern, Queen's Indian territory. C5, luring white to weaken all the dark squares. Is white going to play D5? Yeah. Oh, temporary pawn sack from Alakine. It's got control of D5. Okay. Alakine seems to have a good position. He's got the classic Benoni weakness to probe, maybe, later. D6. I think something has to be done about knight B5, does it? This D6 could be a problem. Oh, he tacks the bishop straight off. Knight D7. He doesn't have to play A6 and B5. That looks logical here if you're a Benoni player. F4. F4. That's a good one, isn't it? F4. <laughs> isn't it just weakening this like diagonal? Weakening some dark squares. Okay, maybe it's justified, but maybe black's just going to play F5. Never know. I play A6. Okay. It doesn't bother with F5. C4. So maybe knight C5. Maybe to B3 later, or just control of E4. Queen C7 supporting a knight to C5 at some point. He's weakening his king side a bit. With the, he's got a vacuum going here. Okay. And this bishop is its last chance. Oh, it's F6. It will be immolated. So what's he going to do with this bishop? Nothing. He lets it. He lets F6 happen. Maybe he's going to sacrifice the knight. Okay, okay, what's going on here? Sorry, sorry, this, this did attack the, the bishop. That's part of me. So there was no chance for f6. Now he gets the bishop out. It's, it looks like classic dark square weaknesses. Look, look how weak the dark squares are in white's position. He takes on c3 to establish more control of e4. Possibly. Check. I wonder if he can just consider an exchange sack here to just tear the black king to bits. Not yet. Knight, knight e5. So knight d3 will be a monstrous knight on d3. Wow. Wow. 
Also, look at this. Black's potentially got King G7 and Rook H8. The Knight's going to be um, attacked. H7, H2 is going to be attacked. Okay, just put the King where the Rook's going to be on the H file. Okay, Bishop takes D5. There's also the diagonal. So White's just fallen apart here in quite a disastrous way. Unless this tactic's got anything going for it. Rook takes B3. Was that missed? Interesting tactic, though. Wow. Knight takes f4. He's protecting the bishop with that, that capture. So he's going to play check and take here next. Ouch. Ouch. I didn't know this, this side of Capablanca. He, he's quite a vicious hacker, isn't it? Wouldn't you say from these games, he's really had some devastating attacking games. Uh, if, if these are the game scores, are they not? Capablanca looks to be a ferocious attacking player. And this is a dark square provocation strategy that's being used. Uh, and now White's just collapsed. White's just collapsed here. He's, he's going to win back the exchange at the right time. Maybe torture the pin with rook e3 first. Now take it. Mopping up. So how many pawns is he up? He's three pawns up. Four pawns up. White could safely resign here. Check. And here White resigned. What a total disaster. White created far too many weaknesses in that game. There's dark square weaknesses here um, that have been created, especially with this f4 business. doesn't really fit into the position, I think, when f4 was played here. Personally, I don't know what you guys think. f4 looks a bit weird, because if this was a Benoni position, in the Benoni you want to you wanna get this sort of stuff. You want to play on the semi-open e-file. You want to use your poor majority on the queen side. So g4 just, just makes things even tastier for black later. He's just weakening his own king, creating a vacuum here. You've got a nice outpost on b3 ready-made as well. And d5 is going to be like weaker. The interesting thing was the bishop takes c3, actually, I thought. You know when he played bishop takes c3 here? I thought that was really cool. Bishop takes c3. check well it was in fact winning d5 because the knight was protecting d5 so d5 is dropping off after bishop c3 so he could have taken it uh he's protecting his d6 first you know when he played knight e5 here he's playing d you know d5 is in trouble so he just needs to shield his d6 pawn from the bishop d5 is still in trouble so knight d3 beautiful knights d5 is finally taken and now there's this nice little knight takes f4. Otherwise, it's a tactical disaster for, you know, taking on d3. So he takes knight f4, and he's mopping up all the pawns now. So these really were crushing wins, some of these uh, decisive games that we've looked at so far. Would you all agree? There's not a hint, really. Do you want me to stop for a few minutes? Sorry, Blitzkrieg Bob. Sorry, Skewer? What? Stop? Where? <laughs> Pardon me? I could save this as pre-1927. We can have a minute's break if you want. Yeah? <laughs> Hold on a sec. Where are we? There was a draw in 1927, and then we have, I believe this is the World Championship match. So I'm just going to temporarily pause for a minute before we get into this 1927 match. Okay. 
Are you all ready to go on? Or do you want to stop for a bit or do you want to carry on another day? Are you all ready to go on? Has anyone learnt anything at all about chess from, from these games at all so far? Is there, is there any little bit of insight about the games? I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit of an eye-opener for me because, you know, I always associate Capablanca with, with technique, with end games, but actually he's quite a hacker as well. And he's, he's quite provocative as well. So 1927 match, Buenos Aires. I think this is a world championship game. And so it's Alakine's first win, 1927. He plays like Alakine. He's got his goal achieved to secure a world championship match against Capablanca. And we're going to see the real Alakine. Does the real Alakine play passively without counterplay? Does the real Alakine create weaknesses? So e4, e6, French defense. Knight c3, bishop b4, winnower. This is ahead of his time. Alakine's playing the winnower, but I thought it was Botvinnik that was popularising the winnower. So none, none of this knight f6 business, the old classical. e takes d5. Okay, bit boring uh, from Kappa. Bishop d3, exchange variation of the French. And I think um, Aliekin, he stands okay here. He's got no problem piece here. Takes on e3. Okay. So in this position... If knight takes, then we have bishop takes h2 and queen takes d5. Uh, the thing is, I think, I don't know if I've done a video of this game on YouTube, but I might have done. c3 should have been played to stop knight b4. So this becomes a little important detail now of the position. Um, wasn't it earlier someone was saying on chess cube about back row mates? or back row, the weaknesses of the back row. And I said something about deflections and decoys. Well, here, I think there's a back row weakness being exploited. We have knight b4. Oh, it was you about the back row. We'll have a look at this one. Look, there's no air. Luftwaffe hasn't been made here. I mean Luft. So there's been no air around the king. So queen f5, look, hitting c2 and f4 now. And all of a sudden, bang, bang, a deflection. And look at this disaster. Why queen b b3, Adam Oxford Uni asks. Okay, where does the queen go? Um, so let's see queen d2. Isn't that the same thing? If queen d2, isn't there still queen f5? Or not? Actually, queen d2 does protect f4. So let's stick this in Houdini, because I don't know the immediate answer. Does anyone know the immediate answer before I check with Houdini? Or do you want to be verified by Houdini? Do you have... What does black play here? Should we check? Apparently, 
apparently queen f5 okay queen f5 still slightly better for black but not as bad as queen b3 Adam I think you're onto something here queen b3 was a very bad move queen f5 was even more effective after queen b3 after queen d2 queen f5 White isn't losing a pawn. Although black is building up like this. That's that's kind of nice. But white isn't losing a pawn. So, okay, so he didn't want to block the bishop. Okay. But he ends up losing a pawn here. Yeah. So queen takes f4. It's back row mate weakness. It's also attacking h2. Queen f5 protecting d5. What about this pawn as well? So he wants to get in maybe h4, h3. Queen f3 mating. So black still doubling up rooks or taking on d4. Whoa, bit of compensation. There's rook e8. The bishops looks dangerous. Is there compensation? Black's two pawns up. He's getting a pawn back, is he? He's getting a pawn back. After that check, blacks are pawn up still. <clears throat> Wants to get the rooks off. So it's Capablanca who's taking the poisoned a7 pawn in this game. So we're going to have repercussions again for the white king here. So uh, there's quite a few threats building up. Check. Check. Rook e3. This looks really bad. He has to defend f3 now. Now this looks really bad. Rook e2 check looks crushing. f3. Capablanca's first defeat, it seems, to Alakine ever in his life. Queen f4. So there's a threat. Just rook here to take. The king's not going anywhere for the discover the check. Capablanca resigned. His first ever defeat. Now let's let's be fair about that. There were a few draws before this game, I think. But let's go back. So, a French defence exchange variation with bishop b4. So black solved the strategic issue of the bad bishop. White doesn't seem to have much from the opening. But he seemed to go badly wrong in allowing this... Um, he should have just played c3 here to stop knight b4s. He didn't play c3. This this move rook e1. You see, I don't I don't understand how Capablanca could play rook e1. I think he's just annoyed with the match. Um, I think he he wanted the match to be cancelled or something, and now he tactically blunders. I mean, it's not it doesn't require huge calculation, does it? Or or just basic prophylaxis? Wouldn't wouldn't you guys think? C3 is basic prophylaxis against knight before, or do you just think knight before is trivial threat? Because also positionally, you know, if the if the queen's evicted, then the queen can come here, can't it? 
attacking uh, the knight on f4. Why would you want the queen to come to f5 in this position? So it's got a strategic consequence of the queen coming to f5. Even if it wasn't just winning a pawn. You wouldn't want to allow uh, your queen. So it seems to be a casual move. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's just Houdini check this position. I think it was okay. C3, okay. It's giving, actually, black is slightly better. Rook E4. Okay, that is dangerous. So black's still better. Black seems to have equalised in this game earlier. So he does get a pressure, a high pressure position in any case. Just slightly better. We're talking 0 0.06. Not much. But still, c3 is better than um, allowing this horrible knight b4. I suppose bishop d6 it implies knight b4 is possible now. The bishop was on b4. Disguising the threat. Could that be the reason? A3. Okay. A3. There are A3 takes takes. Look at this. C3 would have protected D4. We're talking a 0.18 to black. It's a bit passive with this bishop. Okay, so okay, so that disaster happened. Maybe it shook Capablanca. So it's the back row mate theme. Capablanca played some amazing pawn counter pawn sack here. So he tried to uh, he tried to liberate his position. He played the move bishop d2, just offering up d4. Very interesting for bishop c3. And now bishop e5. Maybe black's threatening bishop takes g3 here, trying to smash the white king up. So he was a bit wary of that, and he wants to like keep pressure on, on these guys. So he's getting a pawn back here. If the queen had... Um, gone here then you you've got pressures so you can still take there to decoy do you want to have a look at an alternative to queen f3 here queen f3 is given as the best move if queen g6 actually rook g5 then what's this i was just winning almost the rook if queen h7 Queen e8 is mates. That's a bit embarrassing. So he's he's winning the rook. So queen queen f3 was a good move. So that was a good continuation with queen takes h5. Although rook h6 apparently is clinically better. So he held on to that small advantage here. So white's taken the poison pawn, the a7 pawn. And the, the white's king is going to get it now uh, with, with uh, being weakened after this check, disruptive check. If king there, then rook h1 mate. So the second row is now weakened fatally. Was that a good win by... And kind of just complacency by Capablanca. What's going on here? What what what's your opinion so far? Is this a, a complete shock?
This is this is Yadikin's first win against Capablanca, and it happens in the World Championship match. Oh, sorry. There was there was a win here in nineteen twenty seven. Oh, which was. Did we have a look at that? Sorry, what was this? Pardon me, I don't think this is part of the World Championship match. No, we saw this one. We saw this one earlier. Pardon me. So, ah, Capablanca did beat him in this in this round of the World Championship match. Right. So playing white. So Mustang Fan writes, some say his health was an issue in the championship. Uh, Adam Oxford Uni writes, not really uh, a blowing off the board. Intersweat writes, a um, bit of both. Um, close game, Adam Oxford Uni writes. Some poor play by Capablanca and Mustang Fan writes. Okay, so um, Capablanca uh, playing white in this game. Going for simplification already. C4. Okay, so if takes, probably check. Get the pawn back. He plays check anyway. Oh, there's a horrible threat now of knight C7 check. Parried. Again, knight c7 check. Why didn't black take with the um, knight? I suppose this is not very nice for, for something like rook d1. Rook d1 and e4. Okay, he took with the um, pawn. Okay. There looks to be some uncomfortable pressure here. B4. Oh dear. Is this an opening disaster for Alkine? What's happened? Is Rook takes C6 on the cards to win two pieces for the Rook? Bang. Two pieces for the Rook. That wasn't the best opening by Black, was it? What happened there? He's just material down out of the opening. So two pieces for the Rook. Isolated Queen's Pawn. I think I remember this game. And now there's a good bit of um, manoeuvring to make use of the Bishop and Knight versus Rook. Attacking the rook. The rook's no match in theory for the knight and bishop. I think this is in some middle game books. It's pointing at, at the black king a bit. Knight e6, pointing at the black king. So they're both pointing at squares around the black king now. h4, sealing down maybe the, the pawns, restraining them with h5 coming up. Bang! Knight takes g7. Vicious. It couldn't have been taken, could it? Just queen takes f6 here. I imagine. Let's just check that. Would we say queen takes f6? Looks pretty obvious. Or is it, or is it the check? No, queen f6. I'm just wondering if queen h7... Um, check you just take here it's, it's all over okay I just wanted to make sure about that yeah so Queen g6 oh sorry Adam writes uh, was d5 a mistake let's let's rewind back in that opening but let's let's just first check this Knight f5 it's all over it's horrible it's it's terrible 
black's really passive as as as, as can be losing more pawns okay just knight down end of game so what on earth happened in the opening there we saw this g3 move and now this c5 move no major disaster for black at the moment surely knight takes d4 so what's very unpleasant about the black position here I mean it looks as though white's the one with you know potentially the theoretical you know light square weaknesses around this king so black ventured to play d5 then we had this this horrible strike c4 so it gave opportunity for this vicious check c6 and d7 are weak so this d5 might be the critical mistake let's just check this position with an engine what would be the best move here e5 or knight c6 knight c6 White's got a small advantage. Seems difficult. Isn't there queen? There isn't queen d5 here because it's check, by the way. There's no knight c7 because queen d5, queen d5 is check. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> Uh, so so here white's still got um, an advantage so I wonder where black's gone wrong in this opening um, Bishop g2 is okay don't know weird isn't it where did black go wrong maybe c5 is not good It seems the whole plan had some problem with it. This this position's a problem because of knight b5. You know, if e6, knight b5. This position's problematic. If g6. Again, it's a, it's a natural casting move. Black's not doing very well here. D5, it's, it's better for white, D5. We're talking a 0.36. In fact, Bishop F4, Bishop G5 giving us better moves than C4. So that was a poor move. Apparently, E5 or D takes C4 was better. So that would have been better than the game. So the way Alakine played this was a disaster, basically. So C4 wasn't even the best move. But apparently E6 was a disaster. He could have taken on C4. That would have been more favourable than this continuation. So this Knight B5 is pretty good for Knight C7. He's basically... Um, In very big trouble look he can't play a natural move like bishop e7 can he i think knight takes no actually queen takes hang on could he play bishop e7 play bishop c5 what about bishop e7 what do you guys think? Is there is there a crush here with Bishop E seven? Should we check? Should we check this position? Knight 
Knight d4, knight c7 check, knight c7 check. All oh, right, he's just on c6, yeah. He's just winning the exchange with knight c7. So that's why um, Anakin wanted to shield um, his, his knight on c6, yeah? Sorry, knight c7 check is winning here for white, isn't it? Because uh, it takes you're, you're on c6 at the end of it, so you're winning the exchange. So maybe that's why bishop c5 was played, just to try and shield c6. But now b4. Sorry, the other, the other question is, what, what about knight takes b4? Is that a stupid question, knight takes b4? What would you do here with white? I think there's knight d6 check here. If it takes, then there's rook takes c8. You've got a nasty pin on the queen. Yeah? So this is a terrible position right here. So something seemed to go disastrously wrong in the opening with this e6 especially. It's funny, it's the funny thing about this game is, you know, Queen A4 check doesn't seem, seems like a basic move to consider Queen A4 check, but it's actually quite devastating um, from the opening here, just to win material. All right, so let, let's go on, let's just, let's go on to the next game. So that was two pieces for the Rook, quite easy to win after that. So they had four draw, three draws there, 49, 42 and 40 moves. Then a win in 36. Okay. I just need to go to the loo. Sorry, can we have um, a two minute break? Okay, I'm just going to stop this and um, I'll just call it World Championship um, part one um okay back in two minutes blue and i had a bit of dark chocolate hi there so what game are we looking at now so that's game 15 on the list Oh, we haven't seen this game, have we? Okay. Capablanca playing white, d4. <clears throat> d5. So Queen's Gambit declined. Is it going to be the uh, is it going to be the Cambridge Springs <laughs> variation? That's quite funny, isn't it? Adam Oxford Uni, the Cambridge Springs variation. Do you get to play that a lot? Cambridge Springs, get it? <laughs> is it going to be Cambridge Springs? It is, isn't it? Queen A five. So the spring, where's the spring? You might ask. <clears throat> it's going to be potentially a discover the attack against this poor bishop. Bishop moves. What do you guys think of this opening for black? Do you think it's outrageous? What are the queen and bishop doing over here? This bishop's hemmed in. Would you play this in your right mind? Is it like a sort of trap, the whole thing? Or is it okay? C5. He's going to do something about the bishop. Maybe the queen can come over here in some lines. 
Whoa, Queen A4. This is asking for trouble. A highly entrenched Queen. Okay, I think um, to to me this looks a bit like artificial play from Black, but I suppose his rooks. Okay, they're not connected yet. That bishop's problem, but is it a big problem? Has has Alakine got a point here? He's using the pins quite a lot. One pin on c3 and now one on b3. Why well, it seems to be um, emerging a pawn up. That's the case, a pawn up. He's a pawn up. Okay, so rook d4. He's a pawn up. Black has to do something about h7. Or does he? Sorry, pardon me. This last move, um, as well as attacking h7, it's dropping g2. He's just dropped g2. Check. And bishop e4. Clever, clever. So the queen can take and, and still protect the rook. If rook takes. Queen takes. <laughs> okay, um, so bishop e6, so white's pawn up, has black actually really done badly out of the opening? He's getting his pawn back, but now there's this attack emerging, there's rook h8, so there's queen a3s for rook h8 to be mate. If there's no no escape square, so he blocks that. Bishop d5. Another pin. So if takes again check and he's on that one. He's on g7, of course. So a threat now maybe of bishop e6. This this is looking nasty. What a strange game this is. But Capablanca is still, he's two pawns up. Two pawns up. Um, and now he's, he's threatening to exchange off one pair of rooks. And Alakim resigned. I thought that was a strange game from the opening. I wasn't really convinced by the opening play of black. It seems quite um, optimistic. If we look at this Cambridge Springs variation, wouldn't you guys say this is a bit optimistic what happens here? So knight d7, so c6. So it's not just a Slav, it's a Slav with a difference to actually make use of queen a5 to try and maybe get an attack on, on the bishop in some lines. So this knight d2 Maybe that's a good way of approaching it. It, br it broke the pin on c3. Any questions about this game? It looks a bit weird. c5. He won a pawn here with d takes c5, didn't he? He just won a pawn. It's, it's a real pawn that he won. He was just a pawn up. And he gave up his g2 to win h7. He's still a pawn up and he got his his other rook into the game. He sacrificed the pawn to get it really dangerous. It seemed to get a bit messy this game. But he's, he's always got like pressure now on g7. Does Kevin ever play e4 so we see an Alakine defence? Blitzkrieg Bob writes. I'm not sure. Okay, so just that seemed to be a pawn up from the opening, and then it was changed into pressure. You know when Capablanca had played this other. If we re rewind just for a third pass, sorry, he had played this other pawn sack, 
right in this position coming up which I thought was quite kind of clever you know this rook g1 otherwise what is he doing with this rook so rook g1 you know he's targeting uh, g7 that was quite clever wasn't it let's see what an engine would think of this this position Nope. Bishop takes b7. Does it think anything of rook g1? Does think it's a good move. But rook h1 here. Queen b2. Okay, interesting. So white was clearly uh, better all the way through this, it seems. And now a big advantage after rook h7. You know that last move, rook h7? Big advantage. So instead of rook d6, maybe king g8 to stop rook h7. And this is just asking for trouble walking the king to the center. Okay, so then, then white is totally like winning. Okay. Strange game. Any questions on it? Shall we move on to the next game? I think there were only five decisive games in the World Championship match. Something like that. Any questions? Move on to the next game? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so... There were two two decisive games in a row here. So this is Capablanca versus Aliakin and Alakine uh, won it. So d4, d5, c4, e6. Queen's Gambit declined. I remember seeing one of the positions from this in a middle game book many years ago, I think. Um, C4 becomes a major problem for white in this game. Watch C4 in this game. So Queen A5 is used this, this, this stuff again. More sensible this time. Queen going back. Okay, he's sorting out his bishop, or maybe not. Bishop still hemmed in, no c5. Black looks, uh, black looks a little bit passive here. Yeah. Would you say? What can black do to liberate the position? Okay, he's playing for c5 anyway. Well, the bishops look cute, don't they? Don't you think? Bishops looks quite cute like that. Um, and the rooks are connected. So that's pretty neat and aesthetic. I think anyway. <laughs> okay, so um, knight d3. Bishop g5. Wow, as if knight takes e3 really is on the cards. The take, and then take. Moves out of the way just in case. Queen b7. Walking into kind of potentially dangerous x-ray. Walking out of it. Okay. There is knight d5. Sorry. Blitzkrieg blob. There is knight d5. When? When? When is there knight d5? Sorry. Sorry. Pardon me. E, e4 here. He took on c3. So knight e5. So there's pressure on c6. Sort of. But black's solid here. In fact, d5 is, 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 is a big problem now. 
if black can arrange c5 this e5 is going to be weak there's no white uh, white hasn't got a dark square bishop here so c5 e5 is starting to be vulnerable takes okay he couldn't have taken on on e5 here because takes takes knight e7 check This Greek blog went a while ago. Sorry, knight d5. Okay, we can go a second pass. Or do you want to go to knight d5 right now? Should we go to, or should we carry on from here? Should we just carry on from here for a moment? So knight f6. I think this pawn on f6 is going to be vulnerable. Um. So that's strange. This sort of provocation. Intersweat. Okay, carry on. Here, intersweat rights. Um, so f6 is is vulnerable. Okay, c4, an, a nice move perhaps. Uh, so if takes, then there's bishop f3. The queen's protecting the rook at the moment. Takes there. Check. Goes back. Queen c5. Maybe there's an idea now. Queen b4. Get the pawn going. Sacks the A pawn. C pawn's dangerous. Protecting F7. Whoa. Is rook E8 a major threat? Oh, he took on F2. Check check protects against rookie eight check 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 again king h7 um right so i guess if queen takes c3 here there's rook d8 for, for, that would be dangerous check and finally he takes on f6 so black after all that is a pawn up finally a bit of a grind this game and that pawn's really dangerous and now it's winning um yeah i've seen this game before it's a bit of a grind. Uh, let's, let's, I think we need to do a second pass for it to get more insight. Um, so Queen's Gambit declined. Cambridge springs. Uh, but with the Queen going back now to c7. So black seem to have a cramped position with, with the bishops, particularly this bishop, just on e8. And it looks as though you know c5 was never going to happen. So at some point here... Capablanca went a bit crazy with this e4, e5. His e5 pawn was vulnerable, or proven to be vulnerable, um, after he had played for this e4, e5. M maybe white's perfectly solid here, would, would you say? White's perfectly solid here. He doesn't need to do e4, e5. And that was the beginning of the end, wasn't it? Well, as far as, far as the evidence of this game. He attacked the knight... And now he he played this knight e5, and he played e5. But now his pawns are fixed on dark squares. So alakine has got this provocation strategy here. Uh, that white center is is more vulnerable, and Black's option of c5 looks very tasty at some point to be able to play c5, just to undermine e5. Yeah, maybe he was sick of the draws, Mustang Fem writes. Yes. Um, so c5 is played now. And then d5. So seemingly dangerous threat of knight f6, but it leaves a, a weak pawn on f6. Just a weak pawn on f6. Now um, Alakine's using 
sadistically that f5 square for his queen, which he's won in a previous game. Remember that queen f5 in the previous game? So this pressure may be echoing a, a previous win. So c4. Black's obviously, he seems to be much better now. You know, if, if takes, takes, he will be on, he'll be on the f6 pawn again. Um, so queen and rook versus queen and rook. Does white have to lose this position? Um, should we get an engine evaluation just for interest? Is, is white really losing because of the f6 pawn? Slightly better for black. Queen d5 check is what was played. Queen f5, okay. Queen f5. Didn't really know what he was doing. He found the move queen c5 now. So apparently this is a Houdini move. Queen c5. I think the idea is queen b4. But it's also eyeing that f2, isn't it? King h7, Houdini move. Isn't this amazing? Look, black is finding Houdini moves. King h7. Queen c6. Okay. So maybe, maybe queen c6 wasn't right, actually. He drops the a-pawn. It's only a small advantage for black. It's probably easier to play for black, though. And now apparently white was equal here after queen e7. Which is what was played. Look, we've got 0, 0.00 here. What happened? Whoa! Rook d7. Rook d7 draws. Are you shocked, guys? Oh, I think I've just crashed my machine. Hang on. So if if here, mate, that would be mate. Ale Capablanca missed rook d7. Easy draw. Rook d7. It forces black to carry on the checks. Would you agree? So this pawn's useful after all for this queen takes and thingy. He blundered. He played queen d7, the blunder. Are you shocked? So now it gets easier because of this um, c pawn is very dangerous. There's no such tactic now. It's, it's a bit nasty because of the c pawn. And, you know, the king's really weak. You know, horrible things are happening here. So he missed his chance to draw this game. That's a shame, isn't it? So the f6 pawn had a point to it, which was missed. So rook d7. Okay, key blunder of the game. Uh, shall we move on to... We'll move on to the next game, yeah? So this one, number 24 here. So Alakine playing white, d4. Nimzo engine. Yeah. Well, the f6 was a, you know, tactical wasn't it? The f6 pawn is tactical. So Queen's Gambit um, declined. Classical Queen's Gambit declined. Slavian Triangle. Does he take on f6 or does he play bishop h4? Plays bishop h4. So there might be the freeing maneuver knight e4 at some point. Not here. Okay.
So is Alakine slightly better out of the opening? Slightly better. He's he's making sure his knight's not probed. So knight e2. Maybe um. Okay, where's the knight going? To f4. There's g5. Maybe he's going to take in a knight f4. Knight e5. This looks like a nice knight on e5, doesn't it? Look at this. This is nice. This pressure. It looks like nice pressure. Now he takes. Check. Dangerous. If king h8, there's knight f7 mate. Yeah? Check. Where's this going? Knight c5. Hitting the bishop. Takes the bishop. Has white achieved an advantage? Right, yeah. It's just it's just an old laptop. It's an i i five. Yeah. So bishop d three has white got an advantage here, by the way. Uh, so that light square bishop and okay. So we got different colored kind of bishops here. Okay, the knight's going to be a victor with b three shortly, isn't it? It's going to lose its c four. Okay. And now, just offering exchange of rooks. How does white win this? Some some silent maneuvering here. This knight can maneuver back maybe to c5 or e5 again. I don't know. Yes, he secured c5 for the knight. It looks like it's going to be a big advantage here doesn't it with this knight on c5 finally so threatening bishop takes and queen takes he's going to play bishop takes because he's going to get the d-file now isn't he maybe oh Whoa! King F2? Oh, is he going to play Rook C1 with the pin? Yeah, so it's not check. So King F2 avoids Rook takes C1 being check. Would you agree? So King F2 is not such a mad move, is it? King F2. Good move. G3. Now he plays Rook C1. End of game. In fact, that's the winning uh, tactic in this game. Black, Black seems to resign here. That's the end of that game. Strange game. It was it was the fashion. They didn't really know the hypermodern stuff. Um. So Queen's game declined. He didn't play much of e4, did he? Um. So he seemed to get a passive position here. It was quite depressing that this kind of um happened. This knight on c5, it's funny, he, he, he won that bishop and then this knight sort of got to c5 later. That was, that was the plan here. Um, so he's making way, he's going to move the bishop out of the way and then like this. So that secured an advantage. Bang. Positional plan achieved. And a tact tactical combination now. Remember, guys, if, if rook c1, then it evaporates. Just check, yeah? So, actually, this was a really cunning move, this king f2. How does black defend the pin? Should we just ch engine check this? 
is black busted here because of rook c1 massive advantage to white so king king f2 here was the clinical move houdini moved king f2 i was rook f2 rook f2 would have done as well rook f2 same thing rook c2 okay so it's so rook f2 would have done okay right um so mustang fan writes um what was capablanca worried that alikin was prepared for the other openings he'd used to crush him earlier i don't know let's so we had draw 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 then a win for black I think this is one I've seen before. Pin and win indeed, pin and win. In fact, a lot of the decisive games seem to be based on pins, don't they? The destructive pins, would you say? Some of the games in this match have been based on, on nasty pins and checks. So, um, Lekin playing black. Queen's Gambit declines. I think this is the one with C4, actually. I suspect this is the one with the great C4 usage. So you look at that C4 square for white. And this is quite funny now, sort of. Because, uh, you know, uh, this is in one of my middle game books. Yeah, with white playing B4 here. Because look at this B4 move. It weakens C4. So really we get an equivalent maneuver that we've just seen in reverse. You know the game we've just seen when knight c5 was so destructive? Watch what happens when black gets a knight on c4. He's using that c4 square. And it's it's already it's slightly better for black. Yeah? And there's a lot of pressure already. You know, knight takes e4 e3 and bishop e4 is a threat white's really passive you know that c4 square is is critical so kappa is just he's just playing really passive chess and in this game it's it's used in middle game books again these these seemingly pedantic little threats end up winning a pawn or you know there's there's a lot of central control here for black and he plays e5. So e4 is going to be destructive. The knight's going to be pushed out of the way. You know, doesn't want to go to h2. It's be pathetic. Um, but it's already critical now for white. So he's losing a pawn. Because. Sorry, why not king d2 here, fire time right? Pardon me. King. Knight d2. Knight d2 here. Isn't there just... Isn't there queen takes d2 here? There's queen takes d2 protecting... Yeah? Okay. So he plays knight d4. And now this pin, but it backfires. Have you seen this before? Guess what black plays here? Can you guys guess? I'll give you 20 seconds. What does black play here? Black's playing win. Guess? Anyone? Anyone guessing? What does black play here? No? Ah, oh, Mustang, knight e3. Yes, that's the one, knight e3. To get this check, to get the rook. And that was the end of that game. After, that was the last move, knight takes e3. 
Capablanca resigned. What a sick game. He was positionally murdered. But this pathetic move, if we rewind this this game, you know, this B4 move, really almost like cost him the game positionally. It gave Black a fantastic position. Uh, you know, this, this, this C4, Black's got more control of C4. And White can't use the C5 square in the same way. Um, you know, Black's got a lot of pieces on C5. But how many pieces has White got on C4? Just one. So that's interesting because you think they, they share the C file, do they? But it's the pressure difference, isn't it? That Black's getting like two pieces now on here. Um, and you know that that bishop e two that bishop move uh, weakens c four. Um, I wonder if there was if there was an alternative here. Is this really that bad for White? Should we just engine verify this position? White's got a small advantage in theory. A lot of commentators do criticise b four, but maybe this is okay. I don't, I don't know actually. So knight e four. Just if the bishop had kept on c four. I don't know. Maybe this is okay. Okay, so it seemed maybe this bishop e2, bishop f3 was the culprit. Let the knight come to c, uh, the rook come to c4. Just about equal, but it looks more comfortable for black. So knight c5 here could have been used. But no, knight c3. Okay, this might have been a blunder, this knight c3, guys. Knight c3 might have been a blunder. So knight c5 in this position. After knight c3, this starts to get horrible. The c4 square is, is totally secured now. Black's got great central control. Look at that central grip with e5, e4. So now White's position is going downhill. Knight h2 was technically actually the best move. Then rook a8. Black's, Black's better, but it's not as crushing as the game immediately. So knight d4 just loses material. Takes horrible. E d4 obviously loses a uh, pawn, but so just knight e3 just winning on the spot. He's attacking the queen. If queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes, there's check winning the rook. So this is a totally crushing move, knight takes e3. Oh dear. Okay. Next game, yeah? I think we're nearly done with the World Championship match. Um, a few more draws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Capablanca beat Alakine in 70 moves here. Oh, there. Would you guys rather um, carry on tomorrow? <laughs> should we carry on another day or should we, should we go through this? Should we just whiz through the last two decisive games? What do you want to do? Whiz through them. Should we do it? Marathon. Yeah? <laughs> 70 move grind. Okay, let's just whiz through this. Cambridge Springs. So Capablanca had a small advantage again, it seems. Maybe he's not so keen for an e4, e5 this time. Instead, he's going in for a classic b5. Okay, he's winning the b6 pawn. Yes, he's just snatched the pawn without any risk in this game. 
So this is this is classic Capablanca stuff. He's a pawn up and classic grinds grinds and game grinds pawn up two pawns up two pawns up again so that was much better played wasn't it than the other game um where he, he didn't need e4 e5 he just he just played to weaken um black's queen side So that was much safer, surer win, no risks. Just c6 was the main target. So he played for b5. Okay. So good stuff. It, it was probably that that was really well played, wasn't it? Um, any questions? Should we just should we just quickly play through the last one? And the the ah. Uh, yeah so we just quickly play through the other one maybe we can talk about these in more detail on the day i think i've had it actually i think i'm worn out now so if we just um just check the last one in the world championship match 70 move win oh good there's 63 there's 82 there's 38 oh no in as far as uh, the world championship games decisive there's a 63 move win from Alakine here. Queen's Gamut declined again. H4. Great. H4. <laughs> this looks more like a war zone game, doesn't it? With H4. <laughs> This is the stuff. Yeah, use use the rook. Yeah. Hack attack. He's won a pawn. Just win the end game now. Okay, so he's a pawn up. Alakine's a pawn up. His centre's strong, he's one he's still he's still material up. It's just a grind. Lots of checks check grind the two pawns are going to come through aren't they in the center the two pawns have just been easily herded through okay um as you can see i think <laughs> commentary is a bit lacking here but um let's just look at the last game we can we can detail them tomorrow if you want um another, another day um so there was an 82 me uh the f one of the nails in the coffin then um an 82 move win oh dear how did this go yeah um okay uh Oh dear. Um, okay, so Queen A5. Actually, I think I remember this Queen A5 being used in the middle game book. Uh, I think it's snatching a pawn. White's just snatched the pawn. So he's a pawn up. And then we've got this grind going on again. Whoops, what's this? Knight D6 attacking the Queen. Yeah, um... So this this is just a grind anyway, but just 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 for completeness, right? Uh, let's just whiz through the last decisive game and just detail them another day. So that was a grind, and then we had one more win. Uh, here, no, that that was the last one, and they they had two more decisive games after the World Championship match, so. So the point here is, guys. Yeah. So that was that was the World Championship games over, by the way, the decisive ones, and it was look 1936 Nottingham, where all the world champions got together at Nottingham. Yeah, that was a classic tournament. So up until that time, Alakine he had avoided Capablanca in tournaments, and that's the tragedy. Yeah. 
you know, you think Fisher not playing Karpov was was one of the major tragedies. What about this? They had played this major battle in 1927, and then the next time they play, it's in 1936. We're talking nine years later. So Nottingham, 1936. Dutch defence. So it's C7 week. Is the bishop going to go back? D5. So opening theory had moved on, um, but is the Dutch that solid as the Queen's Gambit declined? Um, have you guys seen this game in the Dutch? Or should we leave these two games for tomorrow? Uh, or should we just, just play through this game just briefly? We'll just play through this game briefly. So White's got a small advantage positionally. So he's playing for c5, I guess. Whoa. No, I think I think I've had it. So he won two pieces for the rook again. I mean, I think I've had it. Okay, this two pieces for the rook. He consolidates me. In fact, so and then and then the last game I've got. Okay, we can detail these tomorrow. This is the last game. The last game of their encounters, 1938. Amsterdam, 1938. Okay. Alakine playing white. Tarish defence against the French defence. Finally an E4 game. Classical Tarish variation, King F1. So am I planning to stream ICC Blitz games? Maybe sometime. I was I was really going to use live stream mainly for Chess Cube actually, and put put the ICC on 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 YouTube. So here, White's um, got a space advantage. Alakine's got a space advantage against Kappa, and he manages to um, so he managed to win this game somehow. He does look better. Check. It looks nasty for the Black King. Check. Whoa! What's happening to this knight on f3? He just lost the whole piece, and that was the end of that game. So let's stop there. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The last few games have been. I, that's just for the record to play through them. Okay, we'll stop there, and we'll we'll, we'll speak back at the cafe. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much.